In today's lesson, we're going to talk about a menu that is found within Photoshop Touch. Uh, I believe most people who understand Photoshop well understand they, they do a great job. Adobe does a great job. You just have more real estate on the screen. They do a great job in laying tools out in some kind of an organized fashion where you have common tools associated in the same palette. And they also have that idea of palettes too as well where you can take a palette out and, and drag it anywhere you want and it's always up on your screen. With the advent of the iPad, uh, Photoshop had to kind of recreate some philosophies in terms of what they do with palettes and menus. So what you're going to see here today is the more menu, um, otherwise known as the, it's the menu with the ampersand at the top, pretty much is just a listing of kind of various tools that they couldn't really find a home for. So they're all, all bound into one, uh, one menu. All right, here we go. I'm going to kind of take a, a, a step forward first before we actually create something and then take a step back. I'm going to show you what the final product's going to look like. Um, we're going to create this water bottle right here um, that you see coming up. This was created by using just grabbing a blank uh, water bottle and then creating the label that you see in front of you, uh, complete with a lens flare in the top part, as well as taking the label, if you'll see the... the um, the, the uh, corner of the label through here. I just selected on there. Let me deselect. The corner of the, the top and the bottom of the label down here too as well are uh, curled to make it look a little bit more 3D. You notice over here there are two layers. There were much more layers and, I, and I'll cover that once we make the bottle itself. Um, but in the end you're going to end up with uh, two two layers at the at the very end. Okay, great. Let's actually go back and I don't want to save that. We're going to go back and start a brand new picture. So I'm going to go down to the edit, um, import menu and we're going to go to Google and I'm going to type just so that we get the same results panel. I want to check my copyright and just make sure yours is set on the same thing. Just go wide open on the copyright, the usage rights. Uh, again, for education purposes, no problem here. We can just grab whatever. So make sure you have all images regardless of license handling up in the copyright thing. And I'm going to type in for the keyword water bottle. And you will see uh, a couple of different types of water bottles there. The one I want you to, to use is on the first row. Just look around for it. On the first row, it's kind of more of the sculpted bottle. It's called plastic dash water dash bottle. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. And this will be the bottle we'll use right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click add at the bottom of the screen and it's going to move it into my new project. And let me expand here real quick. So there's my water bottle ready for the label. And uh, the other difference you'll see with Photoshop as well and Photoshop Touch is Photoshop has a whole palette of shapes tools that you can use. And uh, the reason why you don't see shapes probably, I don't know, I'm trying to read Adobe's mind, but the reason you don't see shapes or a shapes tool within touch is that shapes in Photoshop are created with uh, layer masks where there is no way to create a layer mask unless you're, you're doing some trickery on Photoshop touch. No problem. We can still create shapes, trust me. So we use the selection tools to be able to create shapes. So I'm going to go down to the rectangular selection. And I'm going to put some rounded corners on this. Actually, 10 is very good. We're going to keep it right at 10. And again, these little context panels, uh, you can slide on the slider to increase or decrease your radius, or you can go right into the box and type in the exact number that you want and then click the check mark to accept it. And we've, we're going to about to create a selection with uh, 10 pixel rounded corners. So now I'm going to grab my stylus and I'm going to try to start from the top left corner and try to drag a label that's going to be roughly the same size as the top part of the bottle. Don't worry if it's aligned because we're going to do that in a quick second, but I want to make sure the dimensions are good. So it looks like we're good there. And now I'm going to move it if I grab right in the middle of the selection and I'm going to move it right where I want it over the bottle. Keep this selection going and just realize real quickly that uh, we're on the same background bottle level over here. So if I look at my layers palette down here in the bottom right corner, I notice I only have one layer. I'm going to add a layer because basically I, what I want to do is make sure my label, as I put elements on this label, I'm going to put them on different layers every time. 
So I'm going to add a layer down here. We're going to add an empty layer. You'll notice the empty layer shows up over here. Uh, and you'll also notice it's highlighted. The other thing you'll notice is the selection is still there. So in essence, we basically move the selection from the lower layer to the, the top layer. And the minute we put any color or anything like that within the selection, it now appears on the layer that's selected. So this is exactly where I want to be. Make sure you don't have your bottle selected. You want to make sure you have the blank layer selected. And we're going to go up right here into the uh, More menu, which is the, the ampersand. And there you will see all of the commands that we're going to cover in this lesson today. So the first one I really want to talk about is Fill and Stroke. As I look at the selection, I'm going to choose Fill and Stroke. And you'll notice right off the bat that a submenu a sub comes up. And right now, currently, I'm set to Stroke. Let's make sure everybody is set to Stroke. You've got Noise and Clouds as well, and those tend to be filter, um, kind of filter effects-based things. So make sure you choose Stroke. And the color we're going to pick is black. And the width, I am going to slide down to 2. So we have a nice uh, 2 pixel width around it. So you can figure out already that you know, if you're looking for a definition of stroke, stroke is the outline of an object. Okay. So we're good to go there. I can click check. So we've got our black stroke. I'm going to go back up and I want to show you, oops, sorry, I want to show you fill real quick. And obviously you see fill fills in the actual selection with whatever color you want to put in. You could change any color you want. Let's go with a green or whatever. And then you also have, oh, I kind of closed my menu too quickly. You have, um, you have opacity that you can change in terms of your color. If you wanted a lighter green, you just slide down on the opacity slider and it'll give you a lighter color. This is the same color palette that you would normally use in any other piece of Photoshop touch. We complete with your huge saturation, brightness, and then your, your straight color picker. You got your RGB there as well with your eyedropper too. So same kind of color palette functionality you have with everything in, in touch. I'm going to go ahead and click out of that. Um, for this particular assignment, we're not going to keep the fill a solid color. We're actually going to mess around with some gradients. So go back to the More menu. And now I'm right underneath the Fill and Stroke command, there's a Gradient command. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And the gradient palette is uh, its definitely editable. You can edit any gradient you want. They give you some preset gradients down below. Uh, and you also have the ability to edit your own, which you see i got a couple of them edited right there. Um, you can also change any color you want within a gradient. I'm going to go on the gradient palette, and I'm going to choose the, the gradient options. And you'll notice a couple of things. There's your color picker down here. That gives you the two colors you can choose a gradient from. You can also choose more than two colors if you want a, a multicolor gradient as well. And the other ideas over here are you've got a linear gradient, which if you look on your, uh, your screen goes from top to bottom or bottom to top. And then you have a radial gradient, which goes from the inside of the selection out towards the outside, depending upon the color selection that you got. The tool underneath it, the double head, the uh, two arrows, one on top of each other, is the direction, the way the gradient is going. So in this particular case, I have a radial gradient going from green to black, from green on the inside to black around the outside. If I hit the direction arrow, you'll just see it simply switches the color direction pass, where green uh, goes from black to green, green, I'm sorry, black being the inside, green being the outside. And you can, I'm going to switch that back because I do want the green to black. You can change the shape of this gradient as well. If I move on these handles, if I expand the circle out, you'll notice that the gradient now, the green expands more over the course of the label. If I pull that back in and then change the top one, you can actually change the warping of the gradient as well and make it more of a, an elliptical gradient rather than a perfect circle. I'm going to keep it like this though, and I'm going to expand out because I don't want it jet black on the outside. So that looks pretty good. Just for the sh sake of uh, example here, I do want to mess around with the colors. Let's say I don't want green to black. I just choose the green and I pick some other color, maybe a red. So we got a red to black. Let's say you want to add a uh, another third color in there. If you just press anywhere in between your two end colors, you'll get a third color. You can also drag on these, by the way, too, to create a thicker, darker gradient from the inside out. 
Um, let's say you wanted a three color gradient. Let's say I wanted a green in the middle. And we'll pull that back out just to kind of dramatize the, the gradient. It's a pretty ugly gradient, if you ask me. Um, probably not the way you want to go with a three color gradient where you've got three very different colors. But if I was to take the red and make it an extremely light red, and then the middle one make it a darker red, you can see how this gradient tends to, to uh, work. Let me shrink this up so you can see kind of. Okay, so you can you can put, and you could put a fourth color in there too. Let me move this one over. Let's make this one an even lighter. Okay, so you get the idea of how you can choose, uh, you can make your own gradient. Um, you can also save a gradient too. Let me go back to, let's, uh, just for the heck of it, let's see, I wanted to save this. So here's this gradient that I've got. If I look in my gradient sampler, I've got a piece with a little arrow on it. And if I go ahead and hit that arrow, it gets pushed over to my save gradients palette. Okay, so you can save all of these gradients. Uh, for this particular case though, you'll notice I got two other ones. I'm going to actually choose that one. Uh, this was a gradient I had saved before and I kind of like, so... Um, you could try to replicate this. This is a radial gradient between the green and the black. You'll notice right there. Um, and then you can see the shape of how I've done it. All right, so I've got the gradient on the label. I'm good to go. You'll notice my label is on its own layer. Um, and then the last thing I want to do is deselect. So we're going to deselect. There goes the selection. There's some other pieces in here too, which I want to cover before I move on to uh, text in the next section. Um, there is a way to, let me get out of here. Let's say here I am on the layer. You all know, cause we've covered the transform a little bit. I can actually change the shape of the label using this transform menu if I want. But if I go into the more menu, you're going to see image size rotate these two pieces particularly. And there is a difference here between these two pieces and using the transform. If I hit image size on this one, this, uh, context menu uh, panel is actually asking you for the width and height of the actual image so if you notice let's say I want to expand to 420 and I hit OK uh, the height automatically adjusts to whatever the width is and that's because of this chain link over to the right which again we've seen before in the transform menu this is the proportion this is going to keep the proportion between the width and the height the same exact proportion number or the same exact ratio if I click off on it, you see the link unlinks. And now I can change either the width or the height independently. So let's say I want this 258. And I click OK. 537 is still fine for the height. But I'm going to keep that on. And I'm going to cancel out of this because I really don't want to change the, uh, the whole image size. But if I did, just to show you, let's go 520. Keep the proportion on and I say OK. It changes the shape, the uh, the image size for the whole entire image. Doesn't matter what layer I've selected over here, it's going to change the image size for the whole image. I don't want to make it any bigger. Same is true for rotate. If you think about it, if I'm on the layer and I use transform and I try to rotate, it just rotates whatever's on the layer. But the rotate command within the more menu allows you to rotate the whole entire image. So. You also have some other options here on the more menu. You've got your flip commands as well. So you've got flip horizontal, which flips over a vertical axis, which doesn't really, and I'm sure it's not all that clear, but basically the left side is now the right side and the right side is the left side. We have a symmetrical piece here, so it's hard to, to, to see what is going on there. But if I go back to rotate and I say flip vertical, the top becomes the bottom, bottom becomes the top. That's a little easier to see what's going on there. There's other things in the rotate menu too as well. You've got rotate 90 degrees CW and rotate 90 degrees CCW. Those, the CW and the CCW stands for clockwise and then counterclockwise, which is clockwise obviously is 90 degrees to the right. And I'll undo that. And then counterclockwise obviously is to the left. And then you have the 180 as well, which basically will do the same thing that uh, flip vertical does it flips it completely around 180 degrees. So the difference here again, all things you can do, by the way, all of these commands you can do using the transform menu. But again, the difference between the transform and those commands, transform does it to whatever layer is selected. Whereas in the more menu, it's going to do it to your entire image. 
So we have our label here right in front of us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add some text using the same ideas with it found within the More menu. Um, you'll notice before I added a layer, the minute I wanted to add an element to the bottle. In this particular case, I want you to notice that when I go ahead and I say I want to add some text, give it a quick second here, this takes a second. When I come back to it, you'll realize that this is the only command that adds its own layer automatically. For those of you who do work with Photoshop, you're going to notice that, that text is extremely limited in terms of, let me try to drag this up here. In extremely limited compared to what Photoshop can do with text. So I've got my text palette here down below. I've got the actual text that I want to put in. So let's put in uh, let's put in H2O first. So I'm going to put in H2 and then capital O. I'm going to get rid of my keyboard. So I got H2O. And if you click in here, your uh, font selector, you're going to see the numbers of fonts are. Uh, slightly limited compared obviously compared to a regular traditional system whatever fonts you would have found on your system would show up in the font screen for Photoshop or the font option panel uh, this particular case again with a touch you're limited to whatever fonts come with Photoshop touch I, I could envision this changing with touch updates you know obviously they would be able to give you more fonts uh, but keep in mind fonts do take up memory as well so this list may or may not increase, not, not quite sure at this point in time. I want to take a thicker uh, font. So let me grab that. It's actually a little bit too thick. Let me grab... Uh, okay. Chaparral Pro. You can change the color. I don't know what color yours came in. I'm going to choose white, just a simple white. And then uh, the other pieces I want to show you here real quick, you've got undo, redo, obviously. You've got uh, your proportion link, your grid lock, your nudges. So you can. there's a lot to do here in the, in the text palette. The other piece down here where you've got, you've got two T's for Chaparral Pro. If you notice, if I change uh, to another font, now I've only got one T. So if I push it, oh, this one actually is a good example. Charlemagne uh, actually has no options for you whatsoever. But if I go back to Chaparral, You'll notice I have two options here, one of which is bold, and then the other is italics. But these options are only available for certain fonts within the list. Not every font in the list actually has those options available. And they'll either show up or they won't, depending upon what font you've picked. Okay, so uh, I've picked Chaparral Pro. And uh, let me actually... We're going to bold that. We are going to bold it. And we are going to italicize it. There we go. Um, you can rotate here if you'd like. So I grab the rotate. I can rotate. I can skew if I want. You'll notice in the panel there is no way to change the size of the font. There's no actual point measurement that you can change for the font. How you change it, and this is kind of interesting, but how, can, how you change the font size is similar to what Transform does. If I grab one of these handles and I start dragging on it, that's how you change the font size. There's no way to kind of figure out how many points or, or wh whatever measurement you're using, how big those are, EMs or points or any type of, of uh, measurement. Okay, so that's the first difference. Well, one of the differences between the text tool in touch and uh, the text power of Photoshop. So once I've got it exactly kind of where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. This is what I was talking about before. You notice that there's a new layer here. So every time you use the text menu, it's going to put in a brand new layer no matter what. Now I'm going to use the transform tool and I'm going to bring it up to where I want it to go. And but the other cool feature of text obviously is uh, you have this whole effects rack that you can use on the text layer as well. So let's say I want to put drop shadow. There's a drop shadow that appears um, you know, we can go through the effects. We'll go th through the effects menu at a later time. Um, but just understand that you can throw effects on, on text as well, which was a neat feature. Herein lies the tricky thing about the text layers in terms of Photoshop Touch as opposed to traditional Photoshop. I have this H2O layer. And let's say now that it's, it's placed, I'm out of text edit mode. I want to change uh, the font of H2O. I, I don't like the way it looks. So you might think, okay, I can try this. So let's try to go back. I'm on the text layer. Let's go back to text. 
Maybe that's a way to change uh, the current text layer. And what you notice is the minute you go to text again, it's going to add its own separate text layer. So you're almost duplicating what you're doing. So that can't be it. So let's try double clicking on the layer. Maybe that's it. Maybe I can edit the text in that layer. And you notice it goes to full screen mode. So that doesn't work either. Here it is. There is no way to, ch to change the text layer once you've committed the text. It would be similar in Photoshop to typing out some text and then rendering it. Uh, but again, the difference in Photoshop is I can go back and edit that text anytime I want. In this particular case, I can't. So the only way to fix this would be to delete this layer and then make a new text layer. And you have to reset all of your text again, which isn't a big deal in this case because it remembers the last piece of text you threw in there. So I'm going to throw that back up there. You just have to move it back to where it's going. I had it a little smaller. Let me nudge that and I'll show you a nudge. So you can nudge the text if you want. I'm good to go there. Oh, I put a drop shadow on there too. Let me add that. Just a simple drop shadow. Good to go there. Okay, so now if I wanted another piece of text up in there, I would obviously add another text layer. So we got to put the uh, the name of the water bottle or the water company, Frama. It's a German company. So I'm going to put Frama. Move up here. I'm going to shrink the size a little bit. And then one more piece to add another text layer. And obviously it's from a hose. I'll shrink that and we'll add that in there as well. Looks good there. Let's add drop shadows to each of those. And once you get the workflow going, you you really you can you can cruise around and touch pretty well. So there we go. We got some text on on that label. The other piece I do want to throw in here is the uh, the idea of that hose coming in. So I'm going to add an import a new. Oh, sorry, not the selection menu. We're going to import a new piece, and I'm going to go back to Google. And I'm going to type in water hose. And right up top, water hose. Why don't we go ahead and use that one? That one looks pretty good. Yeah, we'll use this one right here, water hose one. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. I'm going to add that in. And what I'm going to do is, that's fine right now because let me move that layer up so it's the top layer. I'm going to grab the, just real quickly grab the selection paintbrush so that I can just grab, I want to grab just the water coming out of the hose and the hose itself. I don't want all the grass in the back. And again, there's, um, there's other places where we'll, we'll uh, cover selections as well. Oh, what am I? I want to back up and add to the selection. So I'm real briefly going to add to the selection. I kind of over selected up on top here. So I'm going to get rid of that. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to edit and extract. Again, I did that quickly. I would probably refine edges and all that stuff if I had more time. Let us deselect before we shrink. Add some feathering on the end of that selection. And I'm going to move that right up into the label like that. There we go. Perfect. Click OK. I'm actually going to put that below all of my text so it appears behind the text. And there we go. We got a good looking label here with uh, a hose behind it and some text in front of it. Okay, I'm going to take a moment here and show you as well the other some of the other pieces within the, uh, the more command. We've covered uh, image size, rotate. Fill and stroke text. Uh, let's talk about lens flare here real quick. I'll go through fade and crop and warp at the end. Uh, so as I as I look at, let me add a new layer to put the lens flare on. How about that? So I'm going to add, oops, add a new layer, empty layer. Uh, lens flare. Let me click on lens flare, 
And this is just a, spe a simple feature. You've got two triggers you can work with down below, intensity and scale. They also give you different type of lens flares. So let me go through this. You've got Photoshop, which kind of gives you that, you know, colored lens flare. And then you've got the spot flare, which is primarily just blue. Um, artist flare, which carries some color with it, lighter color. The fantasy flare, which has those other flares careening off of it. And JJ which I think is an homage to J.J. Abrams, who uh, is the newer Star Trek uh, director. He's responsible for a ton of movies, too. Um, but it kind of gives you that Star Trek look to it, and then the sunset, which I had originally. You can move the flare. If you notice real quickly, there's a double-headed, um, not a double-head, but a crosshair. And if you just drag on the crosshair, it's very fine, very hard to see. But if you drag on the, uh, the crosshairs, you can actually move the center of the lens flare. Your intensity slider will increase the size of the flare itself, which you could cover up the picture very quickly if you do that. So let me shrink that down to 6%. And then the scale will actually extend the reaches of the flare. So we'll keep that nice and low too. Slide that in. That looks pretty good. We're going to click OK there. So that's what a lens flare does. Just give it gives it another feel. Um, and as I look at this, I wonder why lens flare wouldn't be in the effects menu. But for some reason, it's in the more menu. And again, questions of the universe. Uh, let's look at fade real quick. So as I, let me select the, um, the layer the label is on. And I'm going to choose fade. And this is kind of an intriguing uh, functionality within the more menu. As I look at, they've got all kinds of different fades going on and very similar to gradient in the way it's laid out, right? You can change the fade. There's, these are radio fades. Uh, these are linear fades. And you can change how the piece is faded. So if I pull up on that, basically the color that you see above the red, wherever the red is, is what's going to shine through the fade. And whatever the transparent is, is going to be transparent. So if you look at my label, I've got the top part of the label showing through but the bottom part is blended right into the water bottle and all you see is the water bottle let me pull that down you get to see more of the label as it comes from the top to the bottom if i change the top part you'll notice the top of the label is extreme the the opacity is 100 percent, but the bottom part of the label is uh you can see the water bottle shining through and again you can edit these fades if you like the difference between a fade and a gradient and you might look at this and say well it's very gradient like the difference between a fade and a gradient gradients use color right when whenever you're putting color in there you can make gradients based upon color fades is all opacity level it's all the blending between two layers so if you want to see more of the layer underneath it you, you use more of a fade if you don't you use less of the fade but it has nothing to do with color even though you see red in the fade palette the red is only in indicating what what's going to shine through and what's not going to shine through the fade. So um, you'll, you'll use fade every now and then, but I don't think it's something you're going to use a ton. So we're good there. Oh, actually, I didn't want to put the fade in. I'm going to keep that. I'm sorry. Take the fade off. <laughs> keep the label the way it is. Um, camera fill, the other piece over here. Uh, if I hit camera fill... What's going to happen is you're going to have the camera firing up. And currently, it's on the front-facing camera. Hi. You can see me in the corner there. <laughs> um, so it's basically using the camera to fill in a layer with, uh, with whatever picture you want to take. So let's say I take that picture and I keep it. And you obviously see a layer shows up within the, the picture. That's a feature functionality you can get as well with the import menu up here. As well, either way, you can you can get that to happen. Uh, let me get rid of that layer. We definitely don't want that layer in there. <clears throat> so I've covered all of these. You've got fade, gradients. Uh, warp and crop will be the last ones I look at. Oh, you know what? I got rid of my label. There we go. I just stepped back. Ooh, lost my label there for a second. Uh, huge powerful tools edit redo and undo unbelievable tools that save you from hours of heartache whenever you make a mistake so I'm gonna go on to my label and I'm gonna talk about the warp command real quick I go ahead and I go to warp notice again I was on my label and so this is that idea that I want to kind of warp the label a little bit to make it look like it's wrapping around the bottle 
there's a whole bunch of handles in here that you've got with warp uh, this is something I found a tool that I found that you can mess up your picture in a heartbeat if you don't really realize what you're doing so all of these handles if I drag on any one of them let's say I drag on the edge out here you can see what warp does to this thing okay if I drag on there's one with a, a double headed cross or cross arrow in the middle right here if I drag on that now I'm moving some of the middle grid lines in there nothing really happens on the label itself I'll come back to this in a second let me undo that you will notice though let's say I, I just want, wanted to lower both of these lines okay so we get a rounded effect on the label uh, you'll notice it looks funny and it looks funny for one reason understand that it's only the warp is only affecting the layer that you're on so it's right currently I'm only warping the green label the text doesn't warp which is kind of making it look a little silly because if you're warping a label the text should warp with it as well okay so I'm gonna undo so I've got something I gotta fix before I even get into the warp label or the uh, warp command I have all these layers over here that I need to combine I'm actually gonna move the lens flare up I don't want to warp the lens flare so I have the text and the label so I go all the way down here the text all the way down through the label um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off the lens flare the visibility and I'm gonna turn off the bottle so that all I have visible is the la the uh, label with all of its text elements I'm gonna hit the layer context menu layer options and I am going to use the merge visible command which will basically flatten just the layers that are visible if I use merge down just the uh, the lens flare layer will merge down into the next one if I use the flatten all of these layers will flatten down and we'll get more of this into the uh, when, when we're in the layers unit but I am going to merge visible it makes all of those one label so now let me turn the bottle back on and the lens flare and now we're going to go back to this warp idea now once I start warping you'll realize once I pull down on these handles now it's not just the label that gets warped the text gets warped as well which is kinda in this particular project it's kinda the feature you want to have happen I'll pull those down evenly if I can and you get the warping of the label which makes it somewhat look like it's wrapped around the bottle last the last command in the more menu the only thing we haven't covered to this point is the crop idea crop is a command that was used by photographers it still is currently used by photographers um, which allows you to the idea is that it, it will get rid of everything you don't want in a picture and will keep what you do want so let's say I wanted to crop this picture down so I'm gonna hit crop and you have an option here let me just move up my picture a little bit you've got handles again and if I drag in on those handles you see this box the white box start moving let's say I want to get rid of all this white space on the right side of the bottle and I just want the lens flare and, and the bottle hanging out on the right uh, you've, you've got the same features down below if you like you've got you can change the dimensions of your crop you can grid it you can lock your proportion you can do all of that but what I found with crop typically uh, you just kind of freehand it and you get a little more power uh, based upon how the the iPad works with your touch touch gestures so I'm gonna shrink down so everything in the gray down through here that you see is gonna be gone and everything within the white is gonna be kept so I'm gonna say okay and there's your crop picture again crop gets rid of what you don't want and keeps what you do want but you get to decide what you don't want and what you do want okay there's our sunshiny uh, water bottle it looked a little bit differently than the first one we did but at least we got through the more menu you could see some of the tools associated with that menu